Hey guys, so um, welcome back to the Leadership Series. This is Leadership Demands 3.4. We're answering the question, why endure? Okay, on to James 1, 2 to 4. Faith produces endurance. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So in the Greek... The trial that is being faced is a trial, a proof, proved character, a proof through testing, testing, tested and true proof of genuineness. So this means all of us are going to go through various trials, testings, testings of our character. Then it says to be patient, hupomone. Okay. All right. Then James 511, blessed who endures. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. So this kind of perseverance that Job had, hupomone, okay, just to keep on because God was the one who empowered him to keep on. Matthew ten twenty two, Enduring to the end means salvation. It says, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. What kind of endure? Hupomone. Patient endurance through pressure and trials, but through God's power. John six twenty seven. Endurance for everlasting life. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, um, which the Son of Man will give you. Because God the Father has set his seal upon him. Now this one is meno, the one that is the parking one. You're staying behind to help another. So to remain behind, to lodge or tarry, to be kept, not depart and continue to be present and be unbroken in fellowship with one another and to adhere to him. Um, to be in constant available help to one God by the power of the Holy Spirit, something that has established itself permanently within my soul that exerts power in me. Second Timothy 2.12, if we endure, we will also reign. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. This is hupomone, just to keep on with God's power. James 1 12 those who persevere under trial get the crown of life blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him so this endures is hupomone which we're becoming familiar with and then temptation endures temptation is tested, tried, temptations, calamity, affliction, proving by a bodily condition, um, infirmity, and enticement to sin from an inner desire or outward circumstance, adversity, testing or afflicted, allowed by God to test or prove one's holiness and character. Second Thessalonians 1, 4-5 for your perseverance in faith, so that we ourselves of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. So I put a little number one on patience and a little number two on endure. Because sometimes those mean the same thing, but they're different words here. He's boasting about the churches of God and their patience, their hupomone, okay? And their persecutions are diagmos. They are being chased to be murdered for their religious beliefs and for telling the truth that God has given them, okay? That's the one that most of you are freaking out about on a regular basis. But you know what? You don't have to because God has promised if you are that person, you would take your pain away. Okay. It is an example to others around who have this experience that God is faithful. 
and that their faith is so strong they would give up this life because this life whatever the next life that's what we're looking forward to then it says in all the persecutions and tribulations the tribulations are thalipsis that inner stress okay then um it says that you endure so these are the ones you go through step by step and keep bearing them all the way to the end we're not going to get out of this life without more and more and more of these little like hurdles we have to jump over that are like an irritant or stressful or um, we wish they didn't occur. Okay. That's just not how it goes. Then we've got um, that you may be kind of worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. What kind of suffering are we talking about? This is the capacity to feel heavy emotion suffering when acted upon so this is someone's doing something to you that causes that inner stress and deep emotional stress okay okay on to 3.5 examples of endurance hebrews 12 1 and 2 christ endured therefore we endure therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So both of those, let us run with endurance, and Jesus enduring the cross, that was hupomone, that is endurance with God's power to continue on. Then we've got James 5.11. Job endured and God blessed to overflowing. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Okay, we counted blessed those who endure. That one's who men know, stay behind and serve together, right? And then it says, You've heard the perseverance of Job, that's hupomone, to, with God's power, continue on through the trials and pressure. Okay, 3.6, endurance in ministry. 2 Timothy 2.10, the reason I endure all things is for the elect. For this reason, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, so that they too may obtain salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This endurance is hupomone. But I want you to notice the very important point here. Paul's the leader. He endures all the things that come at him. Why? For the sake of those that will become Christians or those that are Christians. He's doing it for the church. So no matter what he's going through, he's like, that's okay. That's okay. I'm just going to keep pushing. 2 Timothy 4, 5. Endurance spread the gospel, fulfilling the ministry. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. What is fulfilling your ministry? Sharing the gospel. That is the work of an evangelist. So endure afflictions is kakapathia, which is all the different things you could throw in the basket. And they seem very miserable here, but they have a higher eternal purpose. Okay, we're going to summarize this whole bunch of verses into a graphic, as usual. So, why endure? That's the question we basically came down to. It says, meno, to endure to everlasting life. Remember, to stay back and to help another while the Holy Spirit empowers you to endure. So, this is endure, that kind of endurance, to everlasting life. The rest of these endurances are going to relate to hupomone. Hupomone is patient endurance and God gives you the power to endure. Why endure? It basically came down to the testing of faith produces endurance. Enduring to the end, those people will be saved. So they have the hope of heaven those enduring to the end will be saved. If we endure, we also reign. Those that persevere under trial receive the crown of life. 
for your perseverance and faith in all the tribulation that you endure, that you are counted worthy for the kingdom of God. So remember, the perseverance here is hupomone, the faith in all the tribulation. The tribulations are the periosmos. And then the that you endure, that you are counted worthy for the kingdom of heaven. That's another way to say the hope of heaven. You're going to go to heaven, right? So then, blessed is he who endures. So if we zoom out a little bit, all of those verses talked about hupomone, to continue on in perseverance with God's power to give you the faith to do it and the energy to do it and the will to do it. Now, why? Christ endured, therefore we endure. Okay, hupomone. What is the goal? To endure, keikopathia, which is the whole bunch of things, the every kind of tribulation you could think of, endure that and do the work to spread the gospel. That's the goal. Through the chaos, we still stay faithful. Then that is actually the same thing, but more focused, Paul says, endure for the elect that they may obtain salvation. So what's the whole point of enduring? The whole point of hupamone is to do it for others because we're spreading the gospel. But um, I hope that this is kind of sinking in and you're kind of seeing that there is a physical act and a physical, there's a physical cost to doing the job of leadership. And it's okay. It's not like unbearable, like, oh, I wish I wasn't a, you know, ministry. It's terrible. Oh my gosh, I wish I wasn't doing this. It's not what we're talking about. You can do it because God is the one who empowers it. Okay. have a bonus content for you. In James 1.12, remember it had said that if you endure temptation, then you will receive the crown of life. I have to divert here and tell you that I had a very interesting um, study that I was given from the Lord and I chased after it because what had happened is my daughter and I both had several dreams and we had seen different crowns on ourselves or on each other or on different people that we know. And they all looked different and they were in different situations. Different dreams had different, you know, dynamics. And I was like, what is going on with this? Um, these different crowns. I mean, is this the crown of life? Can't be the crown of life. They all look different, you know? So I started looking into it and I started studying and I realized that there's, there's several crowns that are mentioned in the Bible, but four of them have an eternal promise. So first I'm going to overview um, the crowns that we've seen so that you can kind of get a flavor for um, different kind of crowns. And then I'm going to go with the four that are eternal promises in the Bible. Okay. So the heavenly crown seen at our house. We have the camp crown, which was seen on myself. It's all gold. It has leaves and flowers, and then it has waves that are kind of like all around. And that's called a camp crown. Um and it's like gold kind of sticks that almost stick up. Uh, then there's this gold crown that looks very classic. I saw that on myself. And um, then there was a diadem that I have seen. And then there was kind of a, um, you know, princess sleeping beauty kind of crown. In this one, I was working my job post being taken. And I had long hair. <laughs> And I was calling up um, all the aborted babies to go to heaven, like in a like pre-rapture rapture of the babies. Um, so then my daughter has seen um, a crown that she has in her wedding with Jesus. And um, it was kind of unusual and spiky and angled and stuff. And that was all gold. Um, there's another one that she has seen that has curves and it was dipped and dripping of like liquid gold. Um, I have seen this one here um, on a on my number two child when I was given a dream that she has started her turn from being a prodigal to um, being actually raptured uh, before the end times. And so this was her crown. Uh, then... My number four daughter has seen this crown that is on Jesus. 
Um, and this is the crown he wore when he was coming in glory with the angels. Okay. But then he, she also saw this crown with Jesus. And this one was on him when he was coming for war. And he had a sword and he was on a white horse. And that's really similar to my camp crown. And she was telling me that that crown comes with certain words. The Wearing the crown means that the war will be conquered and won. And that all the prisoners of war will be saved. So that's pretty cool. Now here's, I don't know what these crowns look like. But the four main crowns in scripture broken down. There's the crown of victory, the crown of glory, the crown of life, and the crown of righteousness, okay? Here's how you get the crown of victory. Faithful through tribulation to death, perseverance under trial, enduring hardship, playing according to the rules, sacrificing for the gospel's sake. To get the crown of glory, you have to shepherd the flock, to get the crown of righteousness, you have to crave his appearing, keep the faith, and finish the race. And then to get the crown of life, you have to be faithful to death and endure temptation. So I hope this is encouraging you and helping you to understand the costs that are coming. But you know what? It's totally worth every penny. Okay? Hang in there. Thank <laughs> you.